Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. James Chen. I'm a total joint replacement subspecialist practicing in private practice. And today I wanted to review the workflow of the lantern hip system and how it helps me improve the accuracy in my anterior hip replacement surgeries. The case I bring to you today is that of a 71 year old male who has failed non operative management in regards to his left hip arthritis. A uh, patient would like to proceed with a left hip replacement. And as you can see, the patient has already underwent the right hip replacement roughly five years ago that is doing well. Based off my templating, as you can see here, here are the plant implants that we are going to use, and the left lower extremity is shorter by roughly 9 to 10 millimeters. This matches clinically as well as radiographically. In addition to the AP standing pelvic templates, I typically get a standing lateral pelvic and a sitting lateral pelvic image in order to assess the spinal pelvic motion. On the first, starting with the standing pelvic image, what we're determining is sort of what is the patient's functional position. As you can see here, the patient, when standing, the anterior pelvic plane is tilted back roughly five degrees posteriorly. Additionally, looking at the sacral slope, the sacral slope is about 29 degrees when compared to, compared to the horizontal, plus or minus a couple degrees. And when the patient goes to the seated position, it only moves a couple degrees. So as you can see here, 27 plus or minus a couple degrees. So this tells me a couple of things. It tells me the patient has stiff spinal pelvic motion and doesn't really have a significant standing pelvic deformity in that the anterior pelvic position is relatively neutral. So using this information, we're going to use lantern hip in order to proceed with an accurate placement of our components, knowing that the patient has stiff spinal sacral motion. And given the relative neutral position of the patient's functional pelvic position, Really, the importance for this one is just to improve the accuracy of our component positioning. Proceeding with the case, the setup for the lantern hip is relatively simple. I typically perform my prep and drape as I standardly would, and I use my standard approach to an anterior hip as I normally would as well. It's important to prep out the ipsilateral iliac crest for pin placement and to prep distally enough for the thigh mount to be placed for later registration, as you'll see in a moment. I then proceed with my standard approach. Once I get to the point where I'm doing my ipsilateral capsulotomy, I place the femoral tack just lateral to the vastus ridge in the greater trochanter. Then comes placement of the iliac crest pins, roughly two to three finger breasts posterior to the ASIS, relatively in line and vertical, as you can see here. You can use the, the pelvic base for guidance of those iliac crest pins, or you can freehand them. Once this is done, the pelvic base mount can be tightened with the screwdriver. Once the pelvic mount is secured, you can grab the lantern hip system and connect it here as can be seen. And then the quick registration portion of the procedure, as you can see here, there's gonna be three points to register the anterior pelvic plane. First, starting with the ipsilateral ASIS position, followed by the contralateral ASIS position, and then along the anterior pubic rami, you're going to palpate and place the probe to get the third position for the anterior pelvic plane. This will be important to determine your component and cup positioning later on in the case. Finally, the fourth registration point you're going to have to do is to tell the system the alignment of the leg for later leg length and offset measurements, what I typically do is place the probe facing the ipsilateral patella to tell the system the alignment of the leg. Then the last step of the registration is to place the probe onto the femoral tack that we placed earlier, and we're going to register the starting leg length and offset position of the ipsilateral leg. As you can see, this attachment goes onto the thigh mount, which the sensor is going to attach to here in a second. It has a magnet, and so it's important to confirm that it's firmly adhered. The screen then walks you through the various steps of registering this point. First, as you can see there, is transferring the sensor to the thigh mount, then placing the probe within the tack, and simply hitting the register button. It's important to support the base of the lantern hip system every time you press the button to ensure there's no motion. Continue the procedure as we normally would by making the femoral neck resection, removing the femoral head, and preparing the acetabulum per standard technique. I still use fluoroscopy during my procedures. However, lantern hip has allowed me to reduce the amount of fluoroscopy I use significantly, and others 
reduce and to remove fluoroscopy altogether. We're going to use the lantern hip system to navigate the final component positioning. As you can see here, I'm using my standard impactor handle, and there's an adapter that you can place onto your handle so that you don't have to use any specialized handle to navigate the component placement. The lantern hip system then is going to use the sensor to guide your impaction of your acetabular component. So I like to do this in two steps. First, I get the impactor into the position I think it should go in, and then use the sensor to confirm or guide my impaction. So as you can see here, my abduction of 36 degrees, antiversion of 11, I wanted slightly more antiversion, and so I'm going to try to apply this when I impact my acetabular component. However, in this specific case, what happens, what happened and what happens occasionally is during the final few hits of impaction, the component went to a slightly different position. So when the lantern hip was brought back in, it gave me precise information to make an adjustment. As you can see here, it slightly flattened my cup with a 30 degrees of abduction. So we made a slight adjustment and then re-registered the acetabular component position with a final position of 36 degrees of abduction and 15 degrees of antiversion, which I was satisfied with. Now, if you look at this screen closely, what Lantern Hip now provides you is the ability to navigate your component position based off three separate planes. And you, as the surgeon, can choose which plane you would like to navigate off of. In this case, because I got spinal pelvic analysis, I'm matching that standing functional pelvic position. And so I'm using this to navigate my component position. If you choose, you can choose the coronal position, as you can see here, or the anterior pelvic position, as you can see here as well. It also gives you information to help feedback where the position of the pelvis is at the time of your impaction to help navigate what I consider navigate your eyes or adjust your eyes to any abnormalities of the patient's positioning. So this patient was positioned relatively neutral at a zero degree pelvic tilt and was not rotated to a zero degree rotation. Then in order to give the system accurate information regarding your final leg length and offset, we use the wand registration step to register the pivot point of the acetabular component, again, to be later used to restore the leg length and offset information, as you can see here. So at this step, you use the appropriate size femoral head. There is a magnetic divot that the probe will then sit into and it adheres nicely uh, at this point. And we use the sensor to put on to the wand registration tool, and then we hit register to register this point. The lantern system then comes off and you proceed with femoral exposure and broaching as you normally would. As you can see here, I use a single offset brooch for all of my cases through the anterior approach. Once satisfied with the brooch size, I place the trial neck and the trial head that I think is appropriate and reduce the hip. That leads us to the next step of the lantern hip navigation portion of the procedure, where we use the lantern hip system to give us information on our leg length and offset numbers during trialing. So now comes the next step of the procedure with the lantern hip system, where we then get restoration of the leg length and offset numbers from our trial components. So the hip is now reduced. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the magnetic base that's going to go back onto the thigh mount and similar to the initial registration step, register the hip position. So the hip back is in the same neutral position as it was when we placed the femoral tack and register the leg length and offset initially. The sensor goes onto the thigh mount, the probe into the femoral tack, and you hit register and that gives you your leg length and offset values. As you can see here, we roughly lengthen the leg six millimeters and it's nine millimeters medialized. Going to our initial preoperative images, we knew that the left lower extremity is roughly nine millimeters shorter. So this gave me the information that I wanted to increase the length. In this particular case, we were already using a high offset trial neck and we were nine millimeters medialized. Therefore, the plan here was to then sink my brooch down a couple more millimeters, use a calcar reamer, and go up on the length of my head by two. We then chose a head length that was two larger than our initial trial head and reduced the hip, confirming no soft tissue interposition. With the leg back in a neutral position, we used the lantern hip one last time to register the final position. 
Similar to before, we grab the magnetic plate, place it to the thigh mount, transfer the sensor to that thigh mount, and use the probe down to the femoral tack to register the final leg length and offset position. And as you can see here, we were successful in restoring the patient's leg length discrepancy and confirmed that we restored nine millimeters of length to the patient's left lower extremity. This was then validated postoperatively, both clinically and radiographically, as you'll see here in a moment. This final position was then recorded, and as you can see here, the final position of our components can be saved and use can be dictated into the patient's operative report. At the end of each anterior hip replacement, we take final fluoroscopy images. And as you can see here, we were successful in restoration of the patient's leg length and offset. And I was satisfied with the final position of the patient's components. The two week postoperative point, we obtained standing AP pelvic radiographs in addition to lateral pelvic radiographs. And as you can see here, again, there's satisfactory leg length restoration in addition to ASCAPR component position and femoral component positioning. At two weeks postoperatively, the patient is doing very well and is satisfied with his left total hip. So as you can see, the lantern hip system provides accurate and reproducible data in an easy, time efficient fashion. I would say that I'm relatively time neutral using the system, given the relatively few steps and accurate information it provides. Thank you.